All right, what's up, Math 8? Um, welcome to Chapter 3. Um, this is 3.1, Constant Rate of Change. Um, before we get into 3.1, though, uh, we're going to go ahead and look into some, um, just a refresher on graphing, okay? Um, so if I have an ordered pair, um, we're not going to write in rainbow today. Sorry, guys. That was an accident. Um, but if I have an ordered pair, A and B, um, remember that first number is X, and that second number is Y. Okay, so an example of this would be 2, um, we can go with 1. Okay, um, and then when we graph that, um, <coughs> We're going to, um, if I just go 2, 2, 2, and 2, we're going to go um, the x first and then the y second. Okay, so the x, you go left to right. Okay, positive is right, negative is left. Okay, and then y, you go up and down from that point. So you actually don't want to graph where I just put that. Okay, so you want to be, um, so you go um, right 2, and then up 1 for your y value, and that is the point to 1, right there. Okay, a good way to remember that you do um, left to right, or left and right, I guess, um, for the x value, or the first value, um, is that if you were, if, let's say we've got a house here. Okay, and we're working along the roof. Okay, so pretend this is the roof. All right. Um, before we can um, get on the roof, okay, um, we got to move the ladder first. So we're starting with the ladder is always here. Okay, before we can go up, we got to move the ladder to where we need it. Okay, we need to be over here, which means we got to move the ladder before we can climb up the ladder. Once we've moved it there, and we can go up it, okay? That's just a really easy way um, that I like to remember it. Um, and if you want to remember it that way, that's good as well. Okay, so just as another reminder, left to right is the x value, and then up and down is the uh, y value, or the second number, okay? Um, just to do another quick example, if we've got negative 1, um, I don't know, negative 3, okay? This tells us since it's negative, we're either going left or right. We're going to go left. And this tells us since it's negative, again, we're going either up or down. Since it's negative, we're going down, okay? So to graph this, we'll do 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Pretend those are good, um good points. All right, I know they're not great. Um, so we're going to start by going left, move the ladder to the left, all right, and then go down one, two, three. That's our point, negative one, negative three. All right, um, so that's pretty much it for plotting points. Um, the one other thing to remember when it comes to um, your graph and your coordinate planes, um, your quadrants, all right, so this quadrant is quadrant one, and then we just go um, counterclockwise from there. All right, so quadrant two would be right here, quadrant three would be right here, and quadrant four would be down there. All right, so make sure you've got all of this down in your notes. Um, it's extremely important moving forward for um, the next lesson as well as the rest of the lessons that follow um, as we're doing graphing. So. Make sure um, you've just got them down in your notes, um, and of course, ask questions about them if you're um, unsure what some of it means, or if you just need a little bit more of a refresher. All right, um, before we do move on, I want you to go ahead and do these two um, examples that I have written down here. So we have um, the um, ordered pairs one, negative one, and then the ordered pair negative four, three. 
Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is graph it, and then after you've graphed it, um, I want you to tell me what quadrant you're in. Okay, so um, this is a good reminder of these. All right, um, you'll have to draw your own graph unless you have graph paper, um, but that's okay. So go ahead and pause the video and do that now. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started on this stuff that is actually 3.1 real quick. So um, it says, for this real-world link, Marcus can download two songs from the internet each minute. This is shown in the table below. All right, um, so this is before you guys were probably listening to your own uh, music um, on your own phones. So, um, yeah, one song in two minutes. Um, those were the days. Um, thank goodness we don't have to do that anymore. So anyway, um, we're going to look at number one. So it says compare the change in the number of songs Y to the change in time X. What is the rate of change? All right. So we can look first at the time X. Um, the time that passes there is one. Okay. From one to two, we have one minute. Two to three is one minute. Three to four is one minute. Okay, so it is one minute each time. All right. And then the number of songs. Um, I guess I said earlier it was uh, two minutes per song. It's one minute for two songs. So not quite as bad, but still, still a lot slower than what we're used to. All right, so for Y, when we change each time, we're going two and then two, two, and two. All right, um, so that's going to be two songs each, okay? Um, another good way um, and mathematical way to put this is, um, didn't mean to erase that too, but to put plus two here, plus two, plus two, plus two, all right? And then minus one, minus one, minus one, and minus one, or sorry, plus one, not minus one. It is possible to have minus one. Um, but obviously, this is not one where we're going down one each time. Okay. Um, so it says, what is the rate of change? So our rate of change um, is going to be rise over run. Okay. So this is really important to have written down. So rise over run. Okay. Um, this is the same as y over x. All right, and for this one, all we need to do is plug in the change in y, so plus 2, or positive 2, and then the change in x, which is that positive 1. So 2 over 1, which then can be simplified to 2. So our rate of change is going to be 2, okay? So the next thing that it asks us to do um, for number 2 is to graph um, so we're just going to go ahead and graph each ordered pair. So we'll start here. Um, we have 0, 0. So again, we do um, the x value first, y value second. Okay, then we've got 1, 2. We're going to go left, or right 1 because it's positive and up 2 because it's also positive. All right, then we've got 2, 4. We've got 2, up 4. Okay, 3, 6. Le or right three, up six. Okay, and lastly four eight, right four, up eight. Okay. Um, it also tells us to label the axes. All right, so the x-axis is going to be whatever the x value is. So that'll be our time in minutes. Okay, and then. Our y-axis is going to be the number of songs, okay? So I'm just going to put songs. All right. Um, so that's really it for this graph. Um, and yeah, we can um, move on at this point. Okay, so um, then we get to the next page. Um, and it's looking at the same problem, so you'll see the rate of change. They've got the same thing that we had written down earlier. All right, and then you can see the plus 2 and the plus 1 for each one. All right, um, so it also gives us a definition here. 
And this definition is um, for linear relationships. This is important that you do get it down. All right. So for linear relationships, and I'm going to go ahead and double highlight it there um, because it is very important. Um, these are relationships that have straight line graphs. Okay. Um, that's what you need to write down is the thing that I underlined. Okay, so make sure you've got that down or at least highlighted um, and everything like that. Okay. Okay, and then another um, quick little definition. Um, they have constant rate of change here. Um, and really all that means um, is that um, it's a straight line. Um, right, so it's pretty much the same thing as a linear relationship. It's just saying a linear relationship has a constant rate of change. Okay, um, so that one's not quite as important, but it's a good way to help you remember the two of them. Okay, um, and then after that, we'll go ahead and move on. All right, so example one, um, this one is like a banking one, it looks like. So the balance in an account after several transactions is shown. Is the relationship between the balance and number of transactions linear? If so, find the constant rate of change. If not, explain your reasoning. All right, so um, again, you can see these change by the same amount every time the x values do. All right, and then the y values are also changing by the same amount each time. This is an example of one um, that has a negative in the um, change for the y value. All right, because it's going down rather than going up. Okay, so um, if we're looking for the rate of change, which is what they're asking for here, um, the constant rate of change, we have rise over run or y over x, which equals negative 30. So the change in y, which is negative 30, and then um, that's going to be over the change in x, which is positive 3. All right, from here, um, we just want to simplify. So if you want to plug into your calculator negative 30 divided by 3, you're going to get negative 10, okay? So um, they've got it down here, negative $10 per transaction. That's what we got for our rate of change there, all right? Um, or in other words, this means um, that each transaction involved a negative or a um, a ten dollar withdrawal. Okay, so <clears throat> um, I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and try out problem A. See if you can figure out that rate of change, and also try out problem B. Um, we haven't looked at a graph to find rate of change, but I want you to challenge yourself and see if you can do that just from this one. All right. So once you've done A and B, um, that's actually going to be it for this lesson. Um, so hopefully um, everything was clear um, and we'll talk about it in class. So let me know if you have questions and I will see you then.